I was quite sick for about a week or two before I ended up getting rushed to hospital. I just I don't really remember much. Don't really remember much after that. I was pretty I was pretty out of it. It was very lethargic. By Saturday, you were very sick and on life support. Went into full organ failure by Saturday afternoon and you were sent to St Vincent's by air ambulance. I'm Josh Dickinson. I'm 19 years old. I'm from Cootamundra, New South Wales, Australia, and I've been battling lymphoma. Receiving treatment for a life-threatening blood cancer is a logistical challenge when you live rurally. It takes us about four hours to get from Cootamundra to Sydney each time we come up. But that's nothing compared to the logistics required to get his life-saving treatment to Australia from overseas. We obviously knew COVID was going on and we weren't sure what was going to happen with getting it in from the borders. Josh needed a stem cell transplant and in a huge stroke of luck, a matching donor was found in Germany. I was over the moon really that, that they could do this and, and, and help me, help save my life. Stem cell transplants are complicated at the best of times, and this was not the best of times. It was March, when borders were slamming shut, international flights all but ceased, and the stem cell transplant system was thrown into turmoil. Yeah, it was, it was a scary sort of moment in your life, because without the bone marrow transplant, I don't know what would have happened. It was a very harrowing and worrying time for everybody. About a half to two thirds of our patients who have transplants have donors from overseas or interstate. Australia has a diverse but small population, so donor matches for blood cancer patients are often found overseas. Before the pandemic, donor cells were collected, chilled and couriered across borders and through airports, ensuring the cells arrived safely within two days. When couriers couldn't cross borders, there was a lot of frantic toing and throwing about how these cells were going to physically get here. Flights were being cancelled. We had couriers who were stranded overseas, being kicked off flights. I'm glad we didn't know all the ins and outs of what went on behind the scenes. Now, instead of being hand-delivered, donor cells are sent as freight, arriving at the goods entrance of medical facilities in a delivery van. So this shipment arrived from an international flight. And because this often happens... It was supposed to get here yesterday on a flight. That flight was delayed due to COVID. Donated stem cells are now transported frozen, which presents its own problem. I felt sick because I thought, this is it, it's finished. While some shipments were delayed or damaged, Stephen Cook's was completely destroyed. We found out the bag was dropped and, and the bag was split. I said, yeah, well, what does that mean? And so we can't use it. One major crack here, and there's actually two cracks here. These bags are very fragile at minus 90 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, if there's no packaging and these are closed, they can be shaken during transit and break. When we receive cells that are, that are not intact, it, it's quite devastating. Old man, what's going on? Luckily for Stephen Cook, his son was a half-match and could step in as a donor. Very, very, very lucky. Any time, Dad, I'd do it any time for you. Yeah, I know. I know you would. Many blood cancer patients won't have a backup donor in their family, so as long as flights remain unpredictable, they're going to be reliant on foreign cells, frozen and freighted for a long time to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do that another day. What would help is if more young men in Australia followed Corey's lead and registered as donors. The donors in our donor pool tend to be older and female, whereas we need the young, fit males in particular. Young because the cells are better quality and men because they tend to produce more cells. Getting them to join the registry in the first instance is the key challenge. The registry says it has funds to recruit 100,000 donors over five years, but is waiting for federal and state government approval to use it. That would certainly go a long way to mitigating some of these risks. It costs nothing to register. I am truly grateful for everything that he did to, to help me. 
and could help someone in their time of greatest need. If I didn't have the Momo transplant done, I wouldn't be here today.